Here I got some more good news for everyone. The coronavirus appears to be sparing one group of people. Kids, great, the kids are all, all right. The kids are all right. This is Only Real Cloud. I make daily videos. Leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, notification, hit all if you want to watch. Beat that algorithm and share this on your own social media if you want to get the word out. That really will help the channel grow. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Let's get to the story. Today, your coronavirus update. Beijing sets stringent new quarantine rules. The mandate came as the national Chinese government disclosed that hundreds of medical workers who had been helping combat the coronavirus outbreak had become infected and at least six had died. Beijing demands that all who enter its territory isolate themselves for 14 days or be held accountable according to law. Oh boy, they're all taking their temperature with those temperature guns there. Seeking to protect the city from a major outbreak, Beijing imposes new quarantine rules. Chinese state-run television announced on a website on Friday evening that everyone returning to Beijing would be required to isolate themselves for 14 days. And those who do not comply shall be held accountable. Well, that's, that's glad I'm not in China right now. And here in Canada and BC, fifth case of coronavirus confirmed, and we have more and more cases in Canada in my home province. What a lot of people on the YouTubes have been saying is that we should go out and buy some supplies. There's going to be a run on supplies potentially if coronavirus shows up in the community. Everyone's going to go run, try to get food and supplies and masks and salt and coffee and cream and and very quickly the shelves could go empty. This has happened in China, and it's better to go and get that stuff now so you don't have to go out into the crazy traffic or fight anybody over a loaf of bread or um, some carrots or whatever it is at the grocery store. Go get some canned goods, some non-perishables, some, uh, some dry goods, some salt, iodized salt, so you don't get goiter if uh, the food supplies get shut down. This uh, whole coronavirus pandemic, even if it doesn't come into your town, and you're at risk of getting infected, there could be, a, and looks like there's already big impacts to the global economy. With China being a major manufacturer as well as food supplier, uh, their whole economy gets shut down because there's quarantines all over the nation. This could affect supply chains across the world. There could be shortages. There could be big delays before supplies show up. Um, this could get pretty serious. I'm going to go out and get me some supplies. I've been putting it off, but I think I'm actually going to go do it now. Uh, Sounds like that might be a good thing to do. Don't let anyone say that you're crazy prepper. You're just gonna, gonna eat that ramen noodle and those soup anyways. You're gonna eat that bag of rice later if this all turns out to be just a cold, bro. Um, but it sounds like it's pretty serious. But there is some good news. I'd like to focus on some good news. Coronavirus quarantine Diamond Princess cruise ship that was quarantined outside of uh, Australia there. They've let off their first group of passengers and that's great. First group of passengers on the Diamond Princess cruise ship disembark in Japan. Oh, it's around Japan, my bad. To complete their 14-day quarantine period. But I thought the quarantine period was now 24, but they're going to let them out anyways. Oh boy, this maybe isn't so great. But they're having a pretty bad state on that cruise ship. Basically, everyone's got the coronavirus now, probably. They're running out of supplies. Um, everyone's quarantined to the room, so they're pretty. They're probably very, very happy to uh, get off of that, that plague boat. Other good news, how the U.S. is preparing for a major coronavirus outbreak. Yes, the U.S. is taking some serious action. The military is getting ready. They are taking this very seriously, and they are taking strong action in the U.S. The World Health Organization declared an outbreak of the coronavirus a public health emergency of international concern. So what is the CDC doing? They're leading the fight in America. And uh, what are they doing? They're screening travelers at airport who have returned from Wuhan, China, or the rest of the mainland of China, establishing a 29... Oh, that's still a train. Let's just take a break. But we do have some good news. The U.S. is taking this very seriously, and they're doing some major preparations to contain the coronavirus outbreak should it arrive in North America. So here in Canada, we can take comfort in knowing that, at least in the U.S., they're doing a lot to keep this from taking over in the U.S. and therefore it would definitely be a big problem in Canada if that happened since the U.S. has a much larger population, about 10 times the size. So if it comes, if it happens in America, it's definitely going to happen here in Canada too. And in Mexico as well, it would, it would spread everywhere, probably down into South America as well. The CDC has been leading efforts to prevent the epidemic in the U.S. by screening travelers at airports. 
They're also taking other actions. They're establishing an incident management system, posting guidance for assessing the potential risk of various exposures to the coronavirus, and appropriately managing these people. They're developing real-time reverse transcription polymerase chain reactor test, cool, that can diagnose coronavirus in respiratory and serum samples from patients. So I guess they can just breathe into it or they can spit into it, and I think that's what serum means. And then they can actually do a test on the DNA of it, I suppose, with this polymerase chain reaction. They can figure out you know, on, a, on a very precise level that it actually is the coronavirus. The NIH has ramped up research, including the development of a vaccine and antiviral drugs. American pharmaceutical companies are also working on a vaccine, although the process may be a long one. It's unlikely that the it's called the COVID-19 COVID now, will uh, become a potentially life-threatening public health issue. It's unlikely that COVID-19 will become a potentially life-threatening public health issue in the United States. As it is a novel virus, we need to continue to monitor and assess the situation as it evolves on a daily basis. Yeah, the virus is evolving on a daily basis as well. So well, that's not good. Hopefully, apparently there's an airborne and there's more virulent uh, strains of the virus. Apparently, China is really hiding the numbers, and it could be a lot more serious, a lot more uh, people who lost their lives, and a lot more people infected who haven't been reported or out of the data. Uh, only time will tell. Neither the 2019 <clears throat> H1N1 SARS COVID or the MERS COVID, or the SARS COV or the MERS COV epidemics had a combined of both high transmissibility and se severity. The H1N1 was highly transmissible, but not severe. SARS was severe, but it didn't transmit easily between people. MERS was really severe, but it had a very low transmissibility from person to person. So what we have in the, the NCOV-19 is it's highly transmissible. It's highly transmissible, and it's pretty severe. And I personally don't believe that the, the real rate is actually 2 or 2.5%. I think it's probably higher, maybe up high as 9%. Wearing a mask upon arrival to any healthcare facility and meticulous hand hygiene will be most effective to prevent any transmission. So there you go, take that tip. Severity may be underestimated. What was I just saying? Experts em emphasize that while the new coronavirus is more infectious than previous outbreaks of SARS or MERS, the percent of people who die from it is much lower. Based on current reported cases, the novel coronavirus has infected more people than SARS or MERS. However, the percent of mortality is much lower than either MERS or SARS. From what we know, but there's a lot of reports that there's a lot of cremations happening, uh, mass cremations happening in China, and then they're not reporting the true mortality rate. So I personally believe that it's probably higher and that the Chinese Communist government is lying about it to save face because they don't want to bring shame upon the glorious communist state. According to the JAMA article, estimates of severity are usually higher early in an epidemic, but because many people haven't yet recovered, the death rate and severity could be underestimated this time. It's hard to believe that just two months ago this virus was unknown to us, the World Health Organization director said in a statement. We don't know the source of the outbreak. We don't know what its natural reservoir is. We don't properly understand its transmissibility or severity. You know why that think? I think that is because it doesn't have a natural reservoir because it actually came from the Wuhan Biolab and it escaped. Somebody mismanaged something and they were trying to make a vaccine out of it. They were playing around with it and they made a virulent virus strain and it escaped and that's why they don't want to admit fault. It's not in bats. It came from a lab. That's my belief. And it's a, But that's a conspiracy theory. So take that with a grain of salt. We don't know where its actual source is. That's the real truth. Maybe we'll find it in a bat cave somewhere soon and I'll be proven wrong. Hopefully so. Because if I'm right, then that means that this is a continuing, continuing issue in the future, that there might be further leaks like this. Um, but I think that it probably came from a leak. There was an accident. Nobody wants to admit fault in the Chinese bureaucracy. And um, so now they're just struggling and they're scrambling to contain it. Containment is increasingly unlikely, but most cases are mild. Well, that's good. Hidden cases where people with mild symptoms don't seek medical help and so remain untested and unrecorded combined with the highly contagious nature of the disease mean that there could be vastly more cases than previously thought. Yeah, there probably is vastly more. Tom Frieden, a former director at the CDC, told The Guardian, 
It probably isn't worth giving up, but trying to contain Wuhan coronavirus like SARS and MERS is very unlikely, just because of the number of cases and the number of Chinese provinces and the ease in which it, which it is spreading in families, the fog of war reality, which is what makes me suspect that we are that what we're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. So here you go. It's not just my opinion, it's other people's opinion that it could be way higher and the Chinese Communist government is lying about the actual numbers. The risk of the general public remains low, however. She also confirms that most identified cases, identified cases are mild and self-limited. So that's good. Most people are able to fight this disease off. So that is the good news. Even though it's unlikely that we can contain this, it is very likely that you will not be permanently harmed or lose your life if you do actually catch it and have a strong immune system and you're not super old. However, if those things don't apply to you, then this is quite concerning. What is the bottom line? The novel coronavirus epidemic is a global crisis, but it hasn't yet affected the United States or Canada or a lot of other Western nations. The government has taken strong measures based on previous outbreaks to prevent the virus from spreading here. Passengers from China are being screened at U.S. airports and citizens separate or re repatriated from the Chinese mainland are being held in quarantine for a 14-day period. Probably not long enough, probably should be a 24-day period, but oh well. The coronavirus test is available but isn't effective enough to catch all cases. Okay, so it's not as precise as we could hope that it would be. And uh, I'm hoping that the Canadians are following suit with the Americans and taking the same kind of measures, but from what I'm hearing... They were a little bit slow to respond, but now they are doing some of this stuff too and putting people into quarantine or at least interviewing them or screening them. So I have to look in. What is the Canadian government doing? So let's see what Canada's government is doing about it. Canada supports China's ongoing response to novel coronavirus outbreak. Well, that's a bit complicated, but I suppose I was calling for that earlier, that we should be trying to support China's response. Um, it sounds like maybe some of their response is a little bit hard and a little bit late and they're violating people's civil rights. However, the more that we can support them with our own Canadian Red Cross and Red Cross Society of, of, of China and other, I guess, everyone who's volunteering um, and sending protective equipment, that is going to help reduce any potential civil rights violations that the Chinese government are otherwise going to dole out on their poor citizens. So I'm, I'm really supportive of this. I'm really glad that the Canadian government is supporting the Chinese government in containing this. I, I hope that they're also doing a lot to, to protect their own citizens here in Canada by screening and quarantining people who are coming into the country. I believe that is happening. There was news a little while ago about incoming people or people who were evacuated from the Wuhan area were getting sent to a military base for quarantine. So that is good. Here's the quote. Our deepest thoughts are with all those affected by this outbreak. We continue to monitor the situation and stand ready to provide further assistance as needed. Minister of Foreign Affairs, François-Philippe Champagne. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Canada is saddened by the impact of the novel, virus corona, the novel coronavirus outbreak, especially the loss of life on the Chinese population. Personal protective equipment is essential to prevent and limit the spread of the virus. And so... That's Karina Gould, Minister of International Development. And so we're sending, a, we're donating a bunch of equipment and sending it there. I agree with both those sentiments. That is really the thing that is most concerning here and most tragic is the loss of life for the Chinese people and the chaos that's ensuing and all of the, the, the chaos and harm that's happening in secondary ways, not directly from the virus, but just by the panic and by the, by the chaos caused by the pandemic. So I'm really glad that the Canadian government is, in fact, helping China manage this as best they can. I called for that in an earlier video, so I'm glad to see that the Trudeau government is taking this step. Here I got some more good news for everyone. The coronavirus appears to be sparing one group of people. Kids, great, the kids are all, all right. The kids are all right. The new coronavirus named COVID-19 has sickened more than 43. It's up higher than that now. This is from a couple of days ago, just from three days ago, and it's already 20,000 cases too few. About 80% of, uh, very few children appeared to be among the confirmed cases. That's great. About 80% of the people who died from the virus in China were over the age of 60, and 75% had pre-existing conditions, according to a recent report from China's National Health Commission. A small study published in Gen on January 30th in a medical journal, The Lancet, found the average age of patients was roughly 55 years old. That's interesting. So if it's 80% of people are over the age of 60, but the average is 55, okay. I guess there must have been some young people in there to throw the curve a little bit. Here's a bunch of kids in Bangladesh wearing masks to protect themselves from the coronavirus. 
new coronavirus had already killed more people in uh, than the 2013 SARS epidemic, and it appears to be sparing one population group, the children, kids, of the of the more than 60,000 people now that's been infected. The World Health Organization officials say that the majority are over 40 years old. Okay, different numbers, but it's about that range: 40, 50, 60. It's hitting those with underlying health conditions and elderly particularly hard, generally. But it's really good news. Normally it's the young as well, kids, but in this case, they're not as vulnerable to it. it sounds like they're going to pull through. That's great. Increasing age increases the risk of death. Oh, man, that's pretty scary. It appears even over 80 is the highest risk factor. Well, there you go. That's not a surprise, really. Fortunately for many worried parents, there appear to be very few confirmed cases of the virus among children so far. Officials caution that the virus is so new that there is still a lot that they don't know about it, and the data that they are seeing today will likely look different a month from now. It is changing very fast, and we don't know how much of that data China is holding back or misrepresenting. So uh, from what we know, it looks like children are being spared for the most part. Mm -hmm.